Welcome everyone. My name is Dr. Cristina Cabrillo Santos. I have a beautiful guest today. Tanya is a former teacher of mine. I'm so happy to have her here today. Tanya, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Christina. And so today's topic, Tanya is an educator. Uh, she is a licensed massage therapist. She was my teacher while I was studying massage therapy at Pacific College. And what I want to discuss today is a topic that is actually very new to me, and that is dermoneuromodulation. So what the hell is that? <laughs> it's a mouthful. It's definitely a mouthful. Yes, for yeah. short, DNM, um, not DMT, but DNM. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's a different. That's a different podcast. Different so, yeah. realm. Yes. Okay. So Tanya, tell us what is DNM? What is that dermal neuromodulation in the first place? Okay. Um, um, so you say this is something that is new to you. Yeah, it's not. No, it's not new to anybody. We've been doing it all along, right? So um, DNM and it was, it's not a modality, but we'll, we'll call it an approach or a, or a kind of reframe or a system, right? It's just developed by Diane Jacobs, like a, um, who's my teacher, you know, my, my, my mentor, my, my sensei in this. Um, so I would like to give Diane credit. Uh, so long story short, stands for the deep dermo, which has to do with skin, neuro, which are, you know, anything regarding the nervous system and modulation. So uh, creating change. So Creating changes in the nervous system by interfacing with the skin is what it is, which we've all been doing. Right? Um, and one of the components is, of course, neurophysiology. That's the obvious one. Uh, however, it entails a lot of other disciplines, which is what makes the practice so unique, which I think a lot of manual therapy, a lot of, not just manual therapy, but, but a lot of professional dif um, disciplines don't look at, right? So it takes data from like cognitive sciences, from psychology, um, from pain science, right? Which pain science is another umbrella that considers um, these aspects too. And it's completely evidence-based. So um, in Diane's words, is it not mine? It's what she built was an evidence-based case for manual therapy. So what we're looking at here is everything from the early evolution of the nervous system to describe why touch is beneficial. When we understand how it works exactly, then we can work with it a lot better. Okay, so when I went to school and most people were taught muscles before yes. anything, which fine, but that's not where the sauce is at. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, we have to learn the basics, right? We have to understand the muscles, bones, how the nervous system works. How we move, what moves yeah. what, what doesn't move what. When somebody says, hurts when I do this, what else could be involved? Of course. Right. Um, but also, I like to play devil's advocate with myself a lot and with everything, if <laughs> you remember, right? Um, so I'm going to also argue that at the same point. I don't know if you've been to, um, you've traveled at all and received a massage in, in another country where somebody has yeah. none of the training and they're wonderful, right? You come out feeling well. So that begs the question, how important is that? I'm not saying it isn't important, right? It's important if we want to engage with professionals and be worth our salt when somebody um, is paying us. But as far as feeling good, finding relief, it's not always the most important thing, right? Human connection, let's say that person that care, which is, um, um, something, something every, anybody's capable of providing. What we're doing is we're learning kind of what's going on under the hood as accurately as possible with the information we have up till now, which has changed from 20 years ago. Um, there's a lot of, a lot hasn't been updated. It should be because it's complex, right? It's complex. Right. So, uh, does that help describe it in a nutshell? Yeah. So yeah, you mentioned it really encompasses several different aspects, right? So, but so 
because it works on the nervous system through the skin, right? Through touch, how does that look like? I, so for instance, when I think dermo neuromodulation, okay, we are somehow working on the nervous system by touching the skin in a certain way, probably, how does that look like? Because what I'm thinking is like, okay, it must be different from myofascial, right? Stretching that we do. Um, how does it differ for, for instance? Because myofascial obviously affects the fascia, which is under the skin. It also envelopes the muscles and nerves and organs, etc. So different types of fascia. But how does DNM differ from, let's say, myofascial? manual therapy. Okay. So there's a lot in there to dissect. <laughs> anyway, so I'll start with the first reframe, which is a very, you know, um, DNM approach. And she said, when you said DNM works on the nervous system, we're going to change that to we're working with the nervous system. And that one little switch in word is kind of at the core of DNM. Love that. Mm -hmm. It's this. It's not me doing something to someone. So a lot of um, my, um, so myofascial work, and I'm, I'll tell you why I'm doing yeah. air quotes. <laughs> yeah. um, that is, it's very operative as most massages, which is fine in certain settings. Or if somebody wants to relax, and then I'm doing things. But when working with somebody who's in pain, right, whether it's, you know, an acute kind of more short-term pain or long-term chronic pain, that's a very different scenario, right? Because pain is so subjective. Yes. And there's a lot of assumptions about pain which come from these constructs which will now have shown to be outdated and are kind of falling away, which is like pain happens because there's a trigger point or something in the going on, right? So it takes it away from a very whole person experience to kind of like, oh, there's something going on in the meat and tissue and I'm gonna poke at that and that, right? If that was what solved it, we wouldn't have a chronic pain epidemic, which was affecting one in five people and now it's about one in four since the pandemic. So it was, and we have more alternative therapies and mind body approaches than ever. We would think it would get better. It's not, it's getting worse. Um, and that's because there's a fundamental misunderstanding of pain. Of course, I didn't always understand it. Like, I, I just, you know, want to preface that I've done everything the wrong, outdated way before. <laughs> We've all, it's a journey. It's a journey, right? And yeah. even while practicing it. So DNM is not like, here's this thing, then you do this, voila, somebody feels better. There's a protocol. So, um, which is very frustrating for people wanting to learn it, right? So it's, DNM's like, here are many possible plausible reasons that we know um, um, could be contributing to a person's pain experiences. We're not sure what that is. So we're gonna have to involve this person and elicit active feedback. So we make sure that our touch, which can look like MFR or this or stretching. You, this is what I, mean when I was saying, you've been doing it. We've been doing it all along, right? right? Um, it's more about what's connecting with that person. So a lot of times it was, um, we might've experienced this. I know I've done it once upon a time. So it's like, oh yeah, that's painful. Okay, then we've got to, all right, we got something there. We're gonna, that's not the point, right? Yeah. Um, and there are sound reasons for that. And not saying that doesn't work, right? For some people, yes. great if it does, you're saying that adding, it's unnecessary to add extra paint, right? Um, and the reason why it would seem to work are more con context-based. So these are, here are where like, like the cognitive science approaches come in because somebody expects that that's what's going to help it. Right? People that are like, they don't feel like it hurt. They don't think anything's happening, right? Let me tell you, I have <laughs> so many of my clients that come for massage, no pain, no gain. And honestly, yeah. I, I had to kind of pull away from treating people like that because it was ruining my body. Yeah. Just like trying to get something out. They're like, go harder, go harder. And I'm like, wait a minute, but I'm the 
therapist. I know what works better, but some people just have that ingrained, no pain, no gain. You have to like dig into the tissue. It happened just a few weeks ago with a client who had a neck neck pain, which I knew if I just did cutaneous regions with acupuncture, he would have felt better. But he's like, no, I really, I really need that deep work. My physical therapist always gets it out like that. And I was like, okay. <laughs> that will scratch an itch. You know, you're replacing one pain with another. With another. To distract it. Yes. The whole thing is, okay, if you have to keep going for the same thing, something tells me that's not working. <laughs> you yeah. just go, like you have an itch. Yeah, it. again. Got the itch again, scratch it, right? Which what's great about things like massage is there doesn't have to be anything wrong for you to benefit from it and enjoy it, right? right. Um, and Trent, I don't want people to feel like they have to come back to me, right? If I- Thank then, you. If they, if, if, you, if you come, it's because you want to, not because I'm like, oh, if you don't come, I mean, you're gonna get hunched over and then your head's gonna fall off by the time exactly. you're seven, something like that, which once upon a time, I believe because, um, we parrot information, right? And then one day, um, it's so funny, this is before I discovered Diane's work. So, I mean, Diane's phenomenal. She's like five, two, um, coming up in, during a time when, and it's still like, uh, PT is a very male dominated field. Yeah. There's just a woman coming up and saying, yo, this is not how it works. Um, who did the, and, and just saw, like, she noticed something wasn't adding up, right? And this was way, way, it was like in the um, 90s. I mean, probably even before then, she started looking into this. And Diane took, like, the model didn't quite exist. So she's like, okay, we have nervous system stuff, which was a lot of the work of um, um, David Butler, right? who's a, a researcher and a physiotherapist and pain scientist um, started looking into that work that this is when it was emerging. So kind of, uh, I'm going to nerd out for a minute here um, quickly. So kind of the birth of modern pain science, right? So humans have been wanting to solve the puzzle of pain since we first experienced it. Like since we were like knuckle dragging cave people, right? Poultices, praying to God, <laughs> all these things. So this has been a part of a human. It's pain is part of what makes us human. It makes us animals, you know, it's, it's, we live with it. It's, um, it's important. Yeah. Um, so we've been trying to figure this out forever. What we didn't have was equipment, right? So technology has led to a lot of the discoveries that we have now, right? And 20 something years ago, the technology we have today didn't exist. So this is why we keep learning the, the rabbit hole just gets stranger and stranger because now we have things like, you can like, we're looking at this computer screen, you can plug some stuff in, some monitors and watch your brain reacting to your own thoughts in real time. It is bugged out, right? So this is, uh, and then you know, take blood, be like, what does this mean, right? So. Um, that's a lot of what led to this kind of how we know what we know while acknowledging there's still so much we don't know, right? But there's certain things we do know. We know how it doesn't work so far. Um, so, um, can I now, pause you for a second? Please, please. Just because you, uh, you just mentioned, right? So with the nervous system, uh, there is this connection with the skin. Can you tell people why? right? Okay. Maybe right. tissue relationship wise. So I people see. understand maybe the background of that. And then how can this um, type of approach work with the nervous system to help someone who's in pain? Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so let's go back when we were all kind of budding in our, in, in the womb of our parents, right? All of us. So when you're just like this little blob right you just start embryonic out. blob <laughs> well, embryonic blob right like it like an egg there's three we're basically our entire bodies is composed of three different kinds of, of embryonic germ cell so basically our stem cells right we have our endoderm right endoderm this is 
in a nutshell, kind of what makes up our viscera, our squishy bits, smooth, smooth, to, um, um, smooth muscle tissue, organs, things like that. We have our mesoderm, which is what most of, well, I would say all of manual therapy, orthopedic therapies, physical therapy is focused on, right? Yeah. Which is our muscles, fascia, our connective tissue and things like that. And then we have our ectoderm, which is where the realm of DNM is, right? So um, we have our inner squishy bits, we have our connective tissue, locomotive bits, the anatomy chart, you know, the, the, the anatomy dude that's in everybody's classroom, that's our mesoderm. But we've been leaving this stuff out, right? So ectoderm, and this is, um, this tissue is composed of, this um, is our skin, spinal cord, brain, and hair and nails, right? Um, so it's the same type of embryonic tissue the same embryonic yeah. tissue so when you when you're this little blob just like we are now kind of the ectoderms on the outside you know like the endoderm is that yolky stuff and the mesoderm is the meteor layer in between so when you're this blob it's kind of like this right what is happening is um the first thing that develops you, we develop in utero from the outside in, right? So the ectoderm starts folding in on itself. This neural tube creates the spinal cord and then the brain starts to develop. So as the ectoderm is receiving um, um, information, right? In this amniotic fluid, nutrients, you can hear, this is why they're saying like, uh, even in the womb, like if you play music, like, like the fetus can hear that yes, stuff, right? Because in utero, yeah. It's all through the skin. And this is how sometimes people with hearing impairments or that are completely deaf, they can still dance to music because of the skin. Mm. You can That's detect brilliant. the skin, right? It is the most, you can live with, like we can survive with loss of any of our senses except the loss of tactile sensation that will lead to psychosis, right? That's the only sense where that happens. <clears throat> and the only tissue that that happens through and the skin can compensate for everything else. And of course, that's another rabbit hole, but right. So when, and this is kind of folding in here, the, you, then you start to develop this way. So as the little arm buds start growing out and leg buds, this is what develops our nervous tissue. And that all is informed by the ectoderm, right? So um, as that grows out this way, we're getting inform <clears throat> information into that spinal cord, which is also developing. And even after birth, humans were born with very immature, the most immature nervous system of any animal, we're high maintenance. Right? Like a horse will start running around a couple hours after birth, humans, right. we've got a couple, we're needy, right? We're, we're not gonna make it if we're at a horse, but, um, right? So our nervous system is still developing. This is also why even after, after birth, tactile stimulation is so important, which they've done studies of this with the Romanian, and the, with the Romanian orphanages, if that doesn't happen, that leads to marasmus, which is wasting away. That's a 90 plus, I would say that's, I'm being conservative when I say 90% mortality rate without touch. Wow. Yeah. Without, more important than, I mean, food's important, yes, but this is even the most important food. So pretty long story short, the skin is the outside of your brain. It's a part of your brain that you can touch. And when we're interfacing with like people are thinking about muscles and I'll use and this sound like those those, you know, cognitive science, neuroscience things. When you're thinking of, let's say, you're visualizing a, a yoga asana or something, right? If you don't visualize yourself, let's say, standing on one leg, if I visualize myself wobbling and falling over, guess what my body's going to do, <laughs> right? If we're picturing we're working on the mesoderm layer, which is great for active locomotive, proprioceptive stuff, right? Um, we're falling short of a target. 
just by me understanding cognitively what I'm working with, it changes my quality of touch. Right? This is a communication, right? This is a conversation. Let's say we're working with the nervous system. I'm saying I'm working on something. That's me dictating. It's like me just talking at it, <laughs> talking at it. That's yeah. no fun, right? Um, and it's nowhere near as effective. And I swear you have been doing this 25 years about. Um, if the other way worked better, I would continue to do it that way. Absolutely. I tried those ways. Yeah. And it took me kind of having to, I heard people say, I'll use a tissue for dramatic effect. Do this with any, everything I ever learned. Chuck it. And chuck it. Now here's the good part. After you chuck it, then you can be like, oh, now I can put it in a better box. But you have to be willing to do that first and admit. Yeah, you need to clear space for this information to really sink in and kind of rewire yourself to yeah, yeah. work with this different approach, right? Yeah. It's, um, it's uh, and how that happened is I just, learn the meridian system, Thai, Sen line, the myofascial stuff. And it was like, nothing was adding up. I don't know if you've gotten there. You're just like, something's not making sense here. Mm. How can we be, we have, you know, one physiology, which is the right one, I'm trying this. And things started not making sense. And I was just like, things work when they work and they, you know, like what's happening? Like what's the, and I'm always just one of those people that's always, which kind of like led me right now. I always want to know why. <laughs> like, well, yeah. I never stop asking why, which is super annoying. And I just wish my brain would be quiet sometimes. But, you know, like learn, like, you know, I was into like chakras and I'm just like, this something's right. right. Not well, right. I try to combine. I honestly really try to combine. I never work with one thing only. So every session is a combination of things. And that's why usually my sessions do run longer than an hour. Um, and there's a lot of talking to, to my patients and clients as well. You know, it's not like, okay, get on the table. What, what hurts? Okay, great. Doom, 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 doom. Or doom, 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 right? Poke you with needles. So it's really a understanding. It's a conversation. Um, yeah. How did you even get to the place where you're in so much pain now? And then how can we regulate the nervous system and help so you? You've been walking along and stumbling on it. Exactly. Exactly. And I love cupping, for instance. I use cupping a lot because yeah. people see almost immediate relief with cupping. bruising and all the stuff that comes with it. But yeah. Cupping is the, yeah, it's skin based, right? Yes. So you say there's you're using all these approaches, right? Um, DNM distills all these narratives, right? All these explanations, right? Which um, these are ideas that people have about how things might work, right? It doesn't mean that whatever the narrative is, it doesn't mean that the thing isn't helpful, right? It just means wait, well, what, what's really going on? based on the data that we have, right? So DNM is gonna take all these things and distill it. So kind of if you learn these principles and DNM is just one short word, one short word, instead of saying, if you learn neurophysiology, cognitive science, you know, um, human behavior, psychology, kinesiology, um, um, soci you know, social sciences, like, right. It's just easier to say DNM. So DNM takes all those things that are relevant in you know, the healthcare context, particularly what we do, which is interacting with people experiencing pain, right? Um, and describes, this is what's going on, or here are all the possible plausible things from a plausible explanatory model that can be going on. Now, when I do this, I don't know which one's at play. Right? I don't know if it's just listening to something that like you said, you're speaking with people. That alone is medicine. That's it. Absolutely. That's what most people need is to just validate like, yeah, this hurts, right? Um, 
and it sucks. And I'm sorry, people haven't been listening to you and that people have been poking at you in ways that might make it hurt more and are not involving you in that process, right? Um, I don't know if it's the actual receptors, you know, like we're calming down and overstimulated, hypersensitized. Yeah. Energy. Might be a combination of this. I don't know if it's the serotonin um, um, release that can come from, right? Beta indoor. We don't know which one is helping, right? That's, but we know all these things could be at play. It could be that your room is beautiful and relaxed. And this is like one of the things that Diane mentions, like your, your treatment space setup matters. That's like the first impression. We've walked into someone like kind of been, and I worked in PT setups before and I love the PTs that I work with, but I didn't like the environment. It's like there's pop music playing. And some people do, yeah, which is great. And when they do, that context is gonna work for them. Yeah. Right? But if it doesn't, why it might be a nice smell. However, somebody else would come in and that smells like, oh, this reminds me of like a, the nun in Catholic school. <laughs> so it's like her perfume and she was, so it's all these weird things we don't think about. The music we play, right? So the context, I mean, um, right. context is a big thing. It's like one of those little things that's very big that we don't consider that that could be it. Likely a combination, but um, yeah, that's, that's what DNM does. And it's a constant exploration. So every time somebody comes in, it's a new learning experience for me. I learn more from my, from, from the people I work with than, you know, they teach me. I allow my, my clients to teach me. And it's been. Yeah, so do you, do you use DNM uh, in every session? Or has it kind of shifted for you <laughs> yeah. as a practitioner? Yeah. yeah, everybody's using DNM in every session. Right. They're not aware that they are. Right. Or they're not, they're not being conscious of it in a way that it can really maximize. So it, it's, you know, you don't have to change what you're doing. Yes, there's with DNM, there's like hand holes and there's a, there's a certain principle that, which is very similar to mild fascial work, which is like that 90 second minimum hand, right? Mm -hmm. This is based on how neurophysiology works. The thing with myofascial is it's missing the target. We're looking at a layer underneath that, I'm sorry if it, you can't affect. Manual therapy cannot affect the fascia at all. It's skin. This is all we've been working on. You're just saying you don't have to change what you're doing. But when you understand the skin, now I can work with it with more yeah. intention and even squeeze more of those techniques that I've already learned that you know, that makes sense because I'm yeah understanding them more accurately. And you don't have to change anything. Yeah. It's it's here, right? So there's stuff you can do here, but this is where it starts, like with anything. I love that you said that. I actually had someone reach out to me recently and we had a, a, a brief conversation through Zoom and she said, you know, she wanted to come in for acupuncture and then we were talking and she's like, you know what? I, I just need touch even. I just need touch. I just need that skin contact. She's like, I maybe we can do some massage or something like that too. And I was like, of course, I mean, Yes. Yeah, we can do acupuncture. We can do massage therapy. We can do shiatsu. We could do cupping. All of these things, but it's really I feel like a lot of people just need that touch because that's what soothes the nervous system. You know, it's we all do like that. I do so much shiatsu. Um, I love shiatsu. Yeah, me too. and it's just like so calming to people. Like, oh my god, they're like, I don't know. It's just something about shiatsu. I can't even explain it. I just today is shiatsu. I'm like, you got it right. Yeah. But um, Maybe yeah. It's, so it's uh, really. I like that you said that. It's 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 in here. It's not even so much about the technique. Um, it's that touch, right? And I'm going to hopefully add. To what you're saying yeah so it could be shiatsu i don't think it's shiatsu i think it's the way you interact with them through shiatsu and that's like your paintbrush right yeah where somebody else with shiatsu and not have it and this is where kind of like the idea of modalities um 
it's yeah there are ways of expressing touch which is cool and i right. when you're like do you do dnm in every session yes and sometimes that dnm looks very much like shiatsu because that's one of my loves and twina is one of my yes loves. but i do it through a framework of of the, the techniques are the same but i understand you know it's it's d well that's all dnm <laughs> but that is yeah when you're like what does it look like like yeah, sometimes it looks like that. Sometimes it looks like the very pure application. Somebody come in with allodynia where any kind of touch is going to just set, set it off. That, that requires, I think, a different um, sensitivity, right? Uh, a different receptivity yeah. and understanding of how pain works. And that, and it's not... Um, particular to massage or anything, there is a, a painfully outdated, no pun intended, misunderstanding of pain out there. Like there's a lack of pain education across profession. There's a, a, there is a Netflix show um, uh, about the human body, which is so cool. They have all these animations. First episode is about the nervous system. There's a doctor on there speaking of it. I'm, I'm happy to challenge this as just a massage therapist. I will, I will challenge it effectively. When they're describing the nervous system, how it works with herniated discs, they say things like pain receptors. There's no such thing as pain receptors, none. There are no receptors, and pain, just like we don't have fun receptors, right? Having fun is an experience that's dependent on context all these things, maybe the music is playing, you like, I don't know, maybe at a bar, like that creates fun, right? You have a lot of different sensory receptors involved in that. Right. No receptors are one of the things that are often involved in a pain experience. You don't have joy receptors or love receptors. That's kind of like saying pain receptors. When I hear this, I'm just like, ah, because what people think is that hurt always equals harm. And you know, pain's actually a terrible predictor of the state of the tissues. It's real. Somebody is very much experiencing pain. But if you don't understand, and this thing, you don't have to always understand why or exactly what's going on to help somebody feel that. Yeah. It's, sometimes we do, there's comp really complicated cases that are literally out of my hands. Um, um, and it's not, and DNM is no way advertises itself as a cure all for anything. You get like, oh, you learned DNM, and all of a sudden you're gonna be like, Shazam pain out of everybody. It's not what it's about. It's about understanding it, and helping people understand themselves better. It's about self efficacy, which I, um, when I saw, I remember um, watching kind of an episode with you, you were interviewed, I think <laughs> about you, you were, and you mentioned something about, about patient self-efficacy and wanting to work with them. I'm like, that's, that's what it's about. Yeah. Like wanting people. Um, yeah. I remember when I left Miami to come to New York clients, like, Oh, what am I going to do without I'm like, what am I going to do with that? And I'm like, that actually doesn't feel good. Yeah, like, you don't want people not, relying not so hurt. much on you as yeah. uh yeah, that's not a good thing. I, I, I wish it was that everybody had, or it could be like, you can find anybody to care for you and help you with pain, um, as long as they understand it. And, uh, yeah, so that's kind of what I love teaching. It's like, I, love I think, people, yeah, people, you know, so. Yeah, I think you demystified a lot of um, kind of maybe what I thought of DNM, um, but ultimately what I think therapy in general boils down to is that connection, that personal connection with your client or patient or even students, right? Why do we learn from some teachers better than others? right? Like I, I said, so I mean, thousands of hours and thousands of hours of education. And, you know, there's just certain things that wouldn't go in, because I didn't have that connection with, with the lecture with the instructor with the professor, depending on, you know, the type of studies I was going through. Um, and the same is for your healthcare provider. Bingo. Right? Whether it's manual therapy, whether it's something else, it really boils down to that interpersonal connection 
Um, and that's why I feel like people say that, oh, how am I going to live without you if you move or um, my clients go away for the summer. So I see them throughout the, the year regularly. There's people, like you said, they come because they want to come because they feel good. Not necessarily. Yeah, my little kitty. Really? I've heard of those two. <laughs> Not necessarily because it's like they can't function, right? They are functioning. They feel good, but it feels better to come in and yeah. just have that connection with me as well. And yeah. um, I'm okay with that as long as it's not relying on that external therapist to get you better. Like we right. always have to do that internal work. Right. And that, that was a learning experience for me, you know, and um, I don't say, I don't use the word failure is a bad thing. I think that's, it's, I had an opportunity to learn. I'm like, where did I go wrong in that therapeutic relationship that I had somebody? Yeah. Know? And, it, and it's, it involves a lot of, you know, big bite of humble pie, you know, and it's, and, and being like, okay, right. It's easy to say, I've been doing this stuff, it works right, but what about all the other times that didn't work? And I, you know, and I think that is what I learned from, you know, and, and a lot of, I was so young when I started doing this, I was a knucklehead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I remember like talking, you were like, oh, that was great. I'm like, what? You know, I was like, <laughs> yeah, pressing on things. And, um, um, but, you know, as I, and I continue to mature and I continue to learn, um, I look at that being like, all right, I always, always ask myself, how, well, how could I do better? And I think learning, not DNM, just here, it's made me a better person in yes. general. I had to learn all these other, it's changed me. And uh, um, um, I can't, you know, like it's, but learning all these other things has brought a greater awareness and, and bigger yeah. compassion, you know, for myself and others as well. And uh, that's kind of, a part that's also frustrating, uh, maybe not for me. I, I love the part that it's it encourages and demands that we constantly learn and ask that of ourselves, um, which is not a comfortable place for certain people if they're tied to. I want to take the course and learn a thing, and now I know it. Yep. Which I thought for a while, right? And yeah, um, to come full circle, like the class I'm. About 99% positive when I started teaching at PCOM, you were like in that, you were like my first yeah. class. Yeah. You were my first class. Yeah. And it's so funny because I had done, and this is when I, I also started first learning about DNA. I'm going to be about seven years ago or so now, something like that, right? Yeah. 20, yeah, something, 2014, 2015, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So I first started learning and I was already kind of careening like, oh, <gasps> I was like, oh, I'm going to be a teacher. I want to be evidence-based teacher. I'm going to put together. And I started looking and I'm like, wait a minute, there's nothing here. That's been debunked. That, and it was like, I was having an existential crisis. So that was like reconciling, like, how am I going to bring this in? And it's also challenging because I'm also bringing it into, and I, I love like uh, my director, which, you know, I don't know if I have permission to say their name, but uh, um um, my massage chair has just been, because I, I was scared. I'm like, am I going to lose my job for teaching things that are against the status quo? Right. Um, I'm not, I mean, I was doing my job and bringing evidence-based content in, but a lot of that was uncomfortable. And I've gotten a lot better in my delivery. <laughs> so first I was like, well, that's, that's, that's BS, whatever. People were like, oh, I'm like, okay, Tanya, calm down. Right. Just, they're, you know, like, it in. Yeah. So I have to. It's also been, yeah, like, and now I've gotten to where it's like, I, I think how you're saying can explain it in a way that's not, um, and I didn't never meant it that way. I just had to work on my communication skills. Absolutely. All about verbal communication. I wasn't the best at that, admittedly, yeah. right? Um, I wasn't aware, but I definitely needed some polishing. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so that was like, and now I'm bringing it into entry level and um, thankfully, uh, like things people, it's like, it's a college, you're in it and you should hear different things. I mean, I got receipts for, you know, I got the, the, the I got the studies, I can back everything up. I'm saying yeah. it's not pooling. I didn't invent it. I'm just 
like a You're news sharing. report supporting the news. Like, here's what's happening today, and the weather is fun. And today, we right, we found this out about the body. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but yeah, that can be really scary. It was scary for me. Like, you know, oh, this has been a house of cards. And um, yeah, but in, in hindsight, I'm thankful. And I, you know, my goal is like with, you know, pinpoint education is to make that a less scary process for people. Because I understand it can, you know, it, we take it to heart. For good reason like we invest a lot and we do care no matter what narrative like you no know, people are have this and to be like well I mean, you know, it's not like we're wrong I, also, I mean, i've done it all wrong before <laughs> i've done everything wrong so it's okay um but how I'm would you doing. learn right how would you learn if you if you didn't go through all of that Right. So, and some people are lucky and not to say that they bypass, but newer generations have obviously more exposure to newer technology and all this Absolutely. knowledge that is becoming more mainstream and not like, whoa, where did you come up with that theory? Right. Yeah. Um, so can you tell people are you you have pinpoint education which is which is a, a private thing that you do outside of teaching at the college and is this something where people who are therapists already can come and learn more after they've gotten their license yeah, is anybody this, yeah i'm i'm profession agnostic like if somebody is not a manual therapist or something a yoga instructor, I had paramedics, right? Uh, um, so well, different fields, it, 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 you don't have to be a therapist, Dr. Um, Daniel, okay? It, like, um, and it's something I, I was very moved by with Diane's approach. There's a lot of uh, modalities that keep their information a secret unless you take the class, right? Right. Which is weird, because like I remember, I won't say because this person's notorious for sure, certain sure. people. But there was an approach, and I remember this was like, "Am I going to take a DNM class? Or am I going to take this other thing?" So I contacted, I wrote the, the person, like, "Oh, so what is this based on? You have to take the class to know." Like the science was something like, "It's so special and so over your head." And then I looked at the class, and there's like several levels. Fine, whatever. Look at what was going on in DNM, and then here's Diane's like this is science. Like I have no secrets here. This is how it works. If you want to learn more, you can learn more, but you can learn it all just like this. Like, and it's true. We have, anybody can do a, a search and find this information. You have to know what to look for. Right. But that really moved me. Like there's no levels. So like you take a DNM course. The next levels are actually doing the personal and it's, and one thing that I'm happy that I didn't have was like the online content to keep revisiting. And that's one of the reasons why I host and anybody's welcome to this. You know, whether you've taken DNM, whether you work at, and I don't know, you're an MTA, subway conductor, you can come in and ask questions, right? Um, if you want to learn about pain. And that's one of the things, like, I just want this information to get out there because people are hurting right now. And world's a hot mess yes incidences of pain and addiction all that stuff depression and this is like Ugh. they're all it's it's uh tangled and not that and i definitely can't help with any of that but i can help raise awareness about it that there are well, solutions or at least a more compassionate way to be about things that can make somebody's pain experience less overwhelming yeah um, there's still a lot of work to do with that you know and it's um i'm not just you know with the entry-level students i would tell them like i in a good way i just end you where they're where they're at because imagine like just coming in without having to like you're just coming in to like all this new information like yeah like, they don't have to delete now, all the you're, extra you're all going to be like <laughs> you know? yeah and it's you know, and then I'm like, we'll make it better. And then when you teach another, and then it will be even better and better and better. That's, that's yeah. the, you know, I don't, I don't want them to do it how I do it. Like I want them to do it how they do it and improve it. Yeah. Um, 
and yeah, and that's why that's why I do that. Like a couple hours, and also I just love this stuff. <laughs> like, oh, other people, you know, they want to, they want to, they want to speak about it too, like an open forum. So yeah, for sure, so it'd, be, it'd be great to have you in there. But yeah, and it's also I don't want financial stuff to be a barrier for people to learn. Although yeah, it is it is a realistic part of life. You know, the actual, well, of course, you know, but um, yeah. It's an exchange. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's, that, that was very much what moved me about, like, just Diane's way of being about it. Like, I, I learned that she's, uh, yeah, it's like she kind of put a light bulb on in, in the manual therapies anyway, but brought awareness to a lot of other bigger issues. And, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Love it. Thank you so much for this conversation, for shedding some light on DNM. And uh, I really um, love the fact that we're also talking about regulating the nervous system because so much of our world today, especially living in New York City, I mean, obviously, when you live in a smaller environment, not as much stress, etc. But here in New York, at least uh, so many of my friends and clients and patients have a dysregulated nervous system, um, which will bring us to another topic that I want to uh, bring you in another time to talk more about nervous system and other things. And um, we'll have another session about that. But for today, um, again, thank you so much for demystifying a little bit about what this DNM is and um, that we've been doing it all along. We just didn't yeah, know yeah. it um, and that it can be done in many different ways. Yeah. Um, so that's the beauty of it. And I wanna link your, um, your information in the description box below so people can reach out to you, find you. If they're interested in this type of work, I would love for more people to be exposed to it, learn it and have a real experience right? Because yeah. that's, that's where it's at. We can talk theory all we want, but it's really when we experience the work, when we do the work, where the magic is at. Thank you. Um, and, so, yeah. And thank you for, for your questions and curiosity. And I love what you've been up to. And yeah, it's... Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, you, 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 you get it. You get it. It's just getting real nerdy about it. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Sometimes it's good to do that too. And uh, uh, yeah, I like that stuff too. So thank you. It's and it's so great to see you. And I hope you to too. Yeah. As always, everybody. please click like and subscribe so you can get more of this type of material. Let me know in the comments below what you think about DNM. Reach out to Tanya. And I will see you all soon. Mwah. Ciao. Yep.